So inshallah we will learn ayat number 92 to 94 today of surah 91 to 94 of surah al-kahf we'll do a simple translation first we are still in the story of Dhul Qarnayn and he is uh, on a journey and he has completed two portions of the journey and now he's arriving in a place where there are some people who are known as Yajuj and Majuj, they reside. So we'll do a translation first. Auzubillahi minash shaitan rajim Kadhalika, so it was and such it was, and I'm going to do a detailed breakdown of this word. Waqad ahatuna, here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the speaker. He's saying, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, we had encompassed or we had surrounded bima of that or that which ladaihi khubra was the knowledge with him with the dhulqarnain whatever the knowledge dhulqarnain had allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says we had encompassed that or we had complete knowledge of that knowledge then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the next ayat mentions his journey's next leg by saying then he followed away, he continued his journey. Then the next ayat says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, Hatta until he continued journeying until Ida Balaga when he arrived and when he reached Baina Sadaini between the two mountains. Wajada he found min dunihima besides them besides those two mountains qawman a people la yakaduna yafqahuna they would hardly understand qawla a word which means probably they did not know each other's language but they were able to communicate but with difficulty <laughs> so these people said something to dhulqarnain in the next ayat Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning Qalu, they said, the people who were residing by the two mountains, they said, Ya Dhal Qarnayni, O Dhul Qarnayn, Inna Ya Ajuja wa Ma'ajuja. Indeed, the Gog and the Magog, Mufsiduna are the corruptors, are those who are corrupting or spreading the corruption, fil Arudi in the land. So then after pointing out what these Gog and Magog were doing, they requested Dhul Karnayn, the people of the, by the mountains, they made a request to Dhul Karnayn by saying, Fahal Naj Alo, is it that you can make Laka, that we can actually make for you or give it to you, Harajan, some payment, some recompense. Allah upon this fact, Antaj Allah that you make Bainana wa Bainahum between us and these people, Gog and Magog, Sadda, a barrier or a wall. So this is a request they have done to Dhulqarnan and in the ayats after that, Dhulqarnan suggested something and then he built a wall between those two mountains. So going back to the beginning, <clears throat> the word here, the ayat starts with the word kadhalik. I want to spend a few minutes on this word and then explain <clears throat> why it is used in the Quran in some places. In general, we translate such or so it, it is or it was, but it doesn't really bring, bring the full meaning, the details of that. So first thing I'm going to do, do a breakdown of this word. The word is it starts with this full word, Kazalika. Here, the every letter has a meaning in this word. So I'm going to write down the meanings. The first letter is Kaf with a Fatha or a Zabar. This by itself has a meaning. This word first, it has a name. And I'm going to briefly mention the name. It's called Isme Masalun, Masal. Masal is a misal, and this word is used to give an example. For example, I said, this thing is like that thing. 
I'm giving a misal. I'm using an example. So that letter kaf with the fatha is used for bringing the example. In English, the closest meaning I can say is same as. If I am saying this thing is same as that thing, I'm giving them the example of one thing by the other thing. So for that, the, the letter kaf in the beginning with the fatha is used. Then after that, this word, the. Za is a use for ishara, pointing to something. So this is ishara. If you are pointing to something and you want to bring the attention to the person you are talking, to that thing and you're pointing ishara. And this is ishara for something which is near to you. If something is sitting near to you and you want to point and tell or give information to somebody, that is the word za. Then after that, the letter is Lam with a Kasra, Li. This letter is used, this is called Lam -e Ba'ad, it is used for distance. Something which is at a distance. So I'm just going to write down for now. And then when we combine, we will see what that is. So, okay, distance. So if I combine the and Lam, it will be the Li. Zali is a ishara, but the ishara is now something which is far away. So this is again ishara. But this time, instead of near, it is far away. Something which is far from you, then you will use the word zali. If it is near to you, use the word zal only. Last letter, kaf. This is a U, in, 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 and this is called uh, letter or harf -e khitab If you are addressing someone, you are using this word, you, for that. So this is simple English meaning is a pronoun, you. Okay, now, when we combine all these things, it will bring the, the word kazalika, okay? So what is happening, if you are talking to someone, if I'm telling a statement or a story to someone, and after telling the story, I somebody says, okay, that is the way it was. If I expand the statement, if I say, that is how it was, that is the way it was. In Urdu, we say, isi tarha se, aise hi. So when we want to bring that kind of concept and statement, the word kadalika is used. The, here in the previous two ayats, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that when he allowed Dhul Qarnain to meet these people, and then he said to them, to Dhul Qarnain, you punish them or you reward them. So Dhul Qarnain said, those who will obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be gracious people. We will reward them and they will go back to Allah. Allah will reward them. Those people who will disobey in the other order, will, we will punish them and they will be brought back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he will punish them. So in, if you point this word kadalika to that whole statement, what's being said here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying, what he said, that's the way it was. Kazalika, that's how it was. Isi tarha se jo hua, that was the thing it is. So kazalika, whenever it is used, it has multiple things put together. It's pointing, ishara, harf khatab is you, because I'm telling you something. So I'm pointing to you, I'm not saying you, but I'm pointing to you. Then the object, the thing I'm talking about, is zalik. And when I put kaf in the beginning, it becomes as it was. This is as it was. Isi tarha se hua. So that is the meaning of kadalika. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, after making this statement of kadalika, he is saying, waqad ahatna bima ladaihi khubra. So let's break that down. The um, root letters are ha, Wow and Twa, Baab Fa'ala, three letters. So we will go to Af Allah, adding an Alif in the beginning. And when you pronounce that, it becomes Ahata, because 
वाव साउंड चेंजेस इन टू अलिफ सो अहाता मीन्स टू सराउंड समथिंग अहाता उर्दू इज आल्सो यूज टू मेक ए सर्कल अराउंड समथिंग इज अहाता सो अहाता इज टू एनकम्पास समथिंग टू सराउंड समथिंग टू कम्प्रीहेंड समथिंग टू टू हैव ए कंट्रोल ऑफ दैट थिंग बिकॉज यू आर इन सर्कलिंग समथिंग सो वेन यू पुट ए ग्रामर ऑफ फालना वी डिड अहातना वी एनकम्पैस्ड वी सराउंडेड वी हैड ए नॉलेज ऑफ दैट थिंग हेयर ना इज अल्लाह सुबहाना व ताल सो एन काफ कद ब्रिंग इज ए हरफ तहकीक इट ब्रिंग्स द सर्टनटी इन द नियर पैस्ट सो अल्लाह सुबहाना व ताल से इज व कद एंड डेफिनेटली इन द नियर इन द पैस्ट वी हैड एनकम्पैस्ड वी हैड सराउंडेड एवरी थिंग वट वॉज एवरी थिंग बिमा लद ही खूबरा Bima means of that. Two letter, two words. B and ma. B is a harf jar and ma is that which. So bima that which, whatever or that which. The next word is ladai hi khubra. So this word, lam, dal and ya. This is almost same as the meaning in the, and the both of these mean. with okay so and there are many words in the quran where both of these are used for example in the law with allah subhanahu wa taala in dana with us ladaina with us okay so if allah subhanahu wa taala is saying something is with us he will use the word ladai and na will be added na is for us here it is ladai is joined with the who who is he third person and this is a pronoun and this is pointing to zul qarnain <clears throat> so when you combine these two together this will be pronounced ladai he this who will be pronounced as he for the tajweed so that is the word here ladai he means with him who is him zul qarnain so allah subhanahu wa taala says that which bima ladaihi was with zul qarnain we had encompassed that we knew all that what was that thing with zul qarnain the word khubra is used this has come before root letters are kha ba and ra khabara but khubra means khubrun first of all when you make a noun it is khubrun khubrun means knowledge okay so this is coming as the maful of ahatna so when it becomes a maful the two the mass change to two fathas and we add an alif so the word become khubran when you stop you pronounce khubra knowledge lad bima ladaihi khubra that knowledge that was with zul qarnain allah subhanahu wa taala says whatever he knew we all had in compass that we had we know what he had in knowledge allah subhanahu wa taala is saying that anybody who has anything in knowledge allah knows that also so here she is talking about zul qarnain so that was about his previous journey then allah say thumma ba sabab this has come few times thumma means then after that at ba he followed sabab a way so then he continued his journey then allah subhanahu wa taala says in the next ayat hatta idha balagha hatta is until until he continued his journey until this one word i had come before balagha means to reach and when you put three fathas he reached zul qarnain reached balagha where did he reach the word is baina sadaini let's understand those two words first of all the word is bainun bainun means between okay then the word after that is starts with these root letters seen dal and dal 
Saddun is the noun from here, and Saddun means a mountain here, or two big hills. So Saddun, we start with that word. Saddun, two re ras, two dals written with a shadda or tasdeed. Saddun, okay. And then you come, you make a plural of two. And, and the plural of two is made, as I mentioned, few times it has come in these verses. Walid, and the plural of that, and Walid and Walida, plural is Walidan. So plural of Kitaban. So plural of two is made by putting Saddani. Walidani. So that is the plural of two. Saddani. Then you put al before that. The two mountains. Al. So when you pronounce, you don't pronounce lam, but because seen is a shamsi letter, so you pronounce seen twice. Asadani. Okay. Now you have two mountains and you have the word Bainun, you combine them as Mudaf Mudafila. So one Dhamma or Pesh will go, so it will become Bainu here on this first word. And to make the Mudaf Mudafila, this Ya Alif changes into Ya. So Walidan becomes Walidain. Okay. Kitaban becomes Kitabain. So it becomes Saddaini. That's the word in the Quran. Bainus, you still have the Pesh or Dhamma here. Bainus Saddaini, between the two mountains. But this is coming as a Bain is coming as a Maful of Balagha. So when it's coming a Maful, it changes into Fataha. So it becomes Bainus Saddaini. Hatta Iza Balagha until when he reached. Baina between Asadaini between the two mountains. So there were two mountains and he arrived there. So when he arrived there, what happened? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning his journey. Wajada. Wajada, this has also come a few times. To find. Wajada means to find. And so you put three fatas. He found. Zulkarnan found. What did he find there? Mindunihima. Again, the word, there are actually three words here. Min, Dunun, and Huma. Huma is a plural of two. And this Huma is pointing to mountains, two mountains. Okay. So first you combine Dunun and Huma. So it comes Duno Huma and Min is the Harfija, it will become Duni Hima. The meaning of this is to combine this is besides or near or sometimes in between, but besides is better. Besides those two mountains, he found something. What did he find? Qawmun, a pupil. So the word is Qawmun, but Qawmun is a pupil, but it is coming as a maful of wajada. So when a word comes as a maful or object, two the mass change to two fatas, and we add an alif, so it becomes qawman. He found a pupil, some people who were living by those mountains. Then the word in the Quran is la yakaduna yafqahuna qawla. I want to explain this yakaduna. It comes sometimes in the Quran, but it bring, it changes actually the meaning of the word which is coming after that. So if we go back to these three letters, kaf, waw, and noon, the meaning of this is to be. If I use these three letters, kaf, waw, and dal, what's the meaning of these three? The meaning of these three is almost to be. Almost to be. 
which means something is going to happen to be means to ha to happen or to become or to be but when kauda is used almost which means it may happen or it did not happen or hardly it happened so kauda when kauda is used it brings the meaning and actually it, it brings the meaning in the next word and the next word is yafqahuna so it's going to change the concept of yafqahuna but first of all apply the grammar of yafaluna yafaluna they do so you apply a ya in the beginning and a wuna at the end so it becomes yakaduna because the sound of vowel will change into alif so word yakaduna means almost they did yakaduna yakaduna so instead of to be and and if we make the grammar of this thing it will be they are but here it will be almost they are or hardly they are because la is going to also make a change in there so keep in mind that from the certainty of the these two words to be we are going into something which is not sure almost hardly or things like that so this word is yakaduna almost they were if i translate or almost they are but it is going to affect the word ayafquna so let's understand fa qaf and ha are the root letters and this means to understand and the fiqah or faqih all those words are from the said faqah means to understand something okay yafquna is yafaluna they do so yafquna they understand okay so this is the word so we have to combine yaf kahuna means they understand but when you put yakaduna before that the modification of the meaning will be they almost understood understand okay but there is a la before that that will bring the meaning they almost understood or they hardly understood so what did understood each other the word is qawlan qawlun means saying something so which means the people of the town by those mountains and the people of the zulqarnain they hardly understood each other in their speech which means they did not speak each other's language completely so they had very difficult time to comprehend what the other side was saying so com combination of all these four words la yakaduna yafquna qawla will be translated as they almost could not understand each other or they hardly understood each other's speech or saying so that is what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that they had difficulty understanding but i'm sure that things cleared up after some time then maybe they were started using the silent language or some other people showed up there who knew each other's language a little bit so that's the reason hardly they were able to understand each other so once they were able to communicate whatever little communication they had allah says qalu ya dal qarnain so now these people said qalu they said and it is pointing to zulqarnain the, the the people of the town so people who were living by the mountains they said something and this word has come before just want to point out that the the word is zulqarnain this this has a zulqarnain with a damma and when you put a ya in the beginning is a harf nida and this change to zal karnain okay so ya will change this damma to a fataha so ya zal karnain o de zul karnain inna indeed then the two words are the original words are ya jujo and ma jujo pesh or damma at the last letters okay 
but inna is coming before and inna will change last letters pesh or dhamma to as fataha so it becomes ya juja and ma juja okay so so that is the and and again when this is not exactly alif this is a hamza so you pronounce ya juja not ya juja like a harf nada is ya where you combine alif ya with the alif so sound is ya straight forward this is not ya but there is actually a hamza and a jazm so you pronounce ya juja and ma juja okay originally they were ya juju and ma juju we actually read the quran and we don't pronounce it right and we just pronounce like alif is straight ya juj ma juj ya juju wa ma juju and inna will change them to ya juja wa ma juja so they are saying that o zulkarnain indeed these two people they are probably two groups of uh, communities they are mufsiduna again the word is uh, fasada fasada is to corrupt something bab faala but we are going to apply bab afala where it becomes afsada what's the difference in the meaning fasada means to corrupt something afsada means to spread the corruption which is a much bigger and worse thing to spread the corruption okay so afsada if you make a doer of this word fa sin and dal it is fasidun fasidun like a failun is a doer but when you make the doer of these four words like a muslim mufsidun so it this become mufsidun mufsidun the doer in in this bab is made by adding a mim in the beginning and pronouncing mufsidun muslimun mufilun so mufsidun is a single person who is spreading the corruption if you make a plural it becomes mufsiduna so what they are saying that these yajuj and majuj are those who are spreading the corruption or they are corruption spreader in the land the words are straight forward fil ardi al ardu means the earth and fi is a harf jar so in the land they are the spreaders and the corruptors of the spreader of the corruption so they made a statement to them then they made a request by saying fahal naj alu laka kharjan so let's understand that the root letters are jaala jaala means to make so we'll use that one okay to make when we put a noon in the beginning naf alo we do naj alo we will make so the word starts with this naj alo we will make and we may modify this thing okay then they are using the word hal before that which is brings a question statement fa means then or so when you say hal naj alo shall we make instead of we will make shall we make it's, it's putting a statement of question mark la ka means for you shall we make for you what shall we make for you is kharjan okay we also use this word but as a khiraj khiraj is a payment that you make a payment to someone kharaja kharjun is the word which means to give some as a payment something but it is coming as a maful of naj alu so it becomes kharjan instead of kharjun so they are saying can we make some payment to you can we give you some something as payment if you can do one thing for us so they are offering a bargain with zulqarnain for something they need from zulqarnain and they saying we will give you the payment for that in whatever form they were offering the payment 
and what was the request from these people Allah antaj Allah so Allah here will translate as upon the fact or upon our request or whatever we want to do for that okay an is making one change here an is that now we this has come several times before what this un does let's look at the next word ja'ala is the word when you put a ta in the beginning it becomes a grammar of second person taj alo taj alo means you make taj alo with the last letter is the dhamma taf alo ta is for the second person if you're telling someone taf alo you have this is taj alo you make but un when it comes before that un changes taj alo to taj ala last letters dhamma changes to fatha and the meaning becomes instead of saying you make you may might make so to bring the possibility of might we put un before that and change the last letter to a fatha so un taj ala you might make means that we are not forcing you if you want to do you might be able to do that so we will make a payment to you on the fact that if you can make something for us what is that something those two words have come before bainana wa bainahum so bain means between bainun and here Uh, it's a very good point last time um, you know brother nazir pointed out the it is bain is being used twice here bainana between us bainahum between them but in english we just say one time between us and them but why it's being used twice is that this is an exclusively between us and you between two parties bainana between us wa bainahum between them them are the yajuj and majuj so exclusively for between two parties we and the gag magag if you could make something for us then then we will we give you some payment and what is they are asking to make saddan saddun we saw before is a barrier means this is they are talking about some sort of a wall that if you can build a wall between us and them between us and between them we will pay you something okay so this is where it is stopped because um, uh, after that uhudul karna and inshallah we'll look next time offered his services he built a wall there but he did not take anything from them except the physical labor he asked uh, him to with the, these people to provide for them so inshallah we'll stop here and